I am a long time Vim user and I have made many videos on this channel over the course of the last three years about Vim and why it's a superior experience to every other text editor on the planet. And for the most part, I'll stand by that. I think that Vim movements are probably the best way to move around text, period. I don't think that there's a better way out there. It's just, I think that's fact. And while I know that there are people who disagree with me, those people are obviously wrong. Vim movements are awesome and they should be in every single application ever. Anything that has to do with text or moving the screen up and down, whatever, should have Vim movements. But recently, I've been doing something weird. Now, for the last three years, you've been hearing me say that I'm not a developer. And I'm not a developer. I don't ever have plans to be an actual developer. I'm not going to ever get paid for development work. And I think that that's kind of the threshold you need in order to actually be considered a developer. But I have been learning Python for a few months now, and I've been getting back into HTML and CSS. I've been learning some JavaScript for some projects that I've been working on for, for my personal projects and stuff. So I've been using, or I've been coding quite a bit lately, I should say. And I've been using Vim somewhat to do that. The more that I use Vim to code, the less I like it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Matt, you're a Vim fanboy. How can you possibly say that Vim, which is primarily a coding tool, is not great for coding? Well, first off, I'm not going to say that it's not great for coding. I'm sure that people who are more experienced with the tools that enable Vim to be good at coding are probably much more adept at using them to doing that purpose. For me, I'm a noob at all things, but specifically in this, I'm very much a noob. And the tools that I've discovered to make them good at coding and development work and stuff like that don't feel very good to me. Now, it doesn't mean that they're not good. It just means that they don't really, I haven't been able to adapt to the workflow that those tools are requiring of me. I've tried many different tools, so it's not just one or tools. I've, I've tried many different code completion things. I've tried different plugins that allow for language management and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, you can tell from the lack of correct terminology there that I'm still very much a noob. So, uh, you know, I've done obviously quite a bit of research. I've tried to find the best tools and the best plugins and stuff to enable them to be a good tool for my development work. And it just hasn't kind of gotten there yet. Now, I had thought that I could get past this problem by abandoning my configuration file of NeoVim and adapting somebody else's to my workflow. So, for example, I used NVChad for quite a while, and that is a very well-configured NVim config that is meant to kind of transform it into an IDE. And it's a very good one. It has all the features that you want if and probably more features that you don't even know that you need uh, and more that you probably don't need. It has a ton of features, a ton of plugins already baked in and the key bindings and all that stuff are sane and it works really well and it looks nice and it feels nice and all this stuff, but I couldn't get into it all that much. Part of it is that I don't know a lot of Lua and that is a Lua config. Now I've been learning some Lua as I've been trying to dabbling in making NeoVim and Vim better, or in this case, NeoVim, I should say. I've been learning some Vim or some Lua, but I'm still not there yet. I don't really care for that language, so I have a mental block there. Uh, so NVChad, I, I used it for a while, and I just customized it as much as I could on my own, and it was okay, but it still didn't feel right. So I tried LunarVim, which is another IDE configuration file for... Uh, NeoVim, it, it's kind of its own fork at this point, but it's still kind of the same thing. Like it's built up to be a IDE for many different languages to enable people to use it, use NeoVim for coding. And it too just did not feel right for my level of expertise, which is not a very high level at all. They, they Both of those, EnvyChad and LunarVim, felt like they would be fantastic for people who knew what the hell they were doing. But for me, who is very much a noob, it felt overwhelming. There was too many features, too many plugins. So whereas my own configuration file 
felt very incomplete and kind of patched together, very patchwork. And I felt like it was missing things and things didn't really go together. And, you know, I had no clue how to piece things together like I was supposed to in order to get them to work the way it was supposed to in order to actually make it work well as an ID. Where And the, on the NV, NVIM or the NV Chad and the Lunar Vim side, it just felt like there had there's way too much stuff there. It, it and, and this is going to be a very bad comparison. It felt like Emacs to me. Emacs had has a lot of features that I don't ever need, and therefore it feels like I uh, am overwhelmed with all those features, right? It, it's not something that I feel comfortable with, and that's kind of what NVChad and Lunar Vim felt like to me. So I've been struggling with this now for probably three or four months, basically. I've been going back and forth between different configuration files, other people's, and my own. I've been basically using my own recently, mostly because I've basically abandoned the idea of creating my own NVIM config for an ID experience. I've just been using it as is with a few of my previously used plugins. So I've been struggling with this for a while. And what I realized is, is that, unfortunately, as much as I like Vim, Vim is not going to be the th the tool that I need to use if I'm going to continue to code as much as I have been recently. And that saddened me quite a bit because, like I said, I am a Vim fanboy. I have been for at least six years now. Uh, I've been talking about Vim constantly on this channel. I know Vim in and out. I, I, I know a lot of Vim script. You know, I, I've put a lot of effort into my configuration file, both adding and subtracting things, trying to get to feel right. And as much effort as I've put into it, because I love them and I want to stay with it, I just can't get it there yet. Maybe someday I can when I have more experience with what I'm doing, when, I've under when I understand the tools that go into actually being useful for this type of thing. Maybe then I'll be able to come back to them. Uh, but right now, I can't. So I am leaving them. That's basically the whole point of this video. I am not... I am not going to be using them for coding or writing going forward. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going I'm going to go go uninstall NeoVim and never use it again. If I need to do a quick edit in a configuration file, NeoVim makes more sense than opening up a graphical text editor. It just does. But if I'm going to sit down for some coding when I'm going through my, some of my classes when it comes to actually, you know, learning how to do Python or, or HTML or CSS or any of the things that I'm learning at the moment, I'm going to be opening up a graphical text editor or a, an ID in this case. And the one that I've chosen is one that I've made a video about before, and that is Kate. Now, I've chosen Kate for two reasons. One, it's really good, and it has all the features that I need. It has the LSP client integration stuff that I need and stuff like that, uh, even though I'm still very much learning what all that stuff is and how to use it. Uh, it has all of the necessary tools that I need in order to learn without feeling completely overwhelming. Now, it is a KDE project, so it has a ton of options, but I've been able to ignore those, so it's not horrible in that regard. Also, it works really, really well, so it handles large files, so I can also use this for my writing, which is good. And the second reason that I chose it was because it's open source. So I know a lot of people who are developers choose to use a tool called VS Code. It's from Microsoft. It is proprietary. Now, there is a fork of that, I believe, or something like that called VS Codium. I'm not exactly sure the relationship between VS Codium and VS Code. I've downloaded it. I tried it. I didn't really care for it all that much. It just felt too proprietary, even though VS Codium is open source. I I know that's weird some, for something to feel proprietary, but it still did. So I, I decided not to use that and decided to use Kate. It works well for my workflow, even though it doesn't seem to let me set a theme and let it stay there for whatever reason. I'm not sure why that's happening. But the point is, is that I've chosen Kate. It works really well for all the things that I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of bash scripting. I've been doing Python, HTML, and all that stuff. And it just works fantastic. And it, it fits the workflow for my current experience level. Now, whether it will continue to do so as I get better at coding, I don't know. Uh, it's possible that as I learn more, I'll outgrow this tool. That's possible, and in which case I'll go find something different. Maybe then VS Code will make more sense to me, I don't know, or VS Code and whatever it happens to be. I'll make that decision in the future. As of right now, this has, this has been perfect for my workflow, both for writing and for coding, and it's good. Now, 
I have not been showing very many of my scripts that I've been writing in my classes on the channel. I've, I've been doing that for a reason because, guys, seriously, my beginning Python is atrocious. Uh, I don't want to show it to anybody. It's embarrassing. It's really, really bad. Uh, so I don't show that. That What you guys just saw on screen was a, a bash script. And even that is not very good. So <laughs> I'm still very much a noob, which is kind of the whole point of all this stuff. I'm still kind of learning what the good, the best tool is for me and my, you know, use case and all that stuff. So as of right now, Kate is where I'm focusing my energy. I'm learning it pretty good. And it's just kind of worked fairly well for me when it comes to what I need to do. So I'm leaving them behind. Now, it's a kind of a sad day for me because I really liked Vim. I, I will proselytize Vim, if that's the right word. I don't even know. It's been a very long day. And it, 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 Vim is just a fantastic tool. And I still, th oh, there, here's another reason why I chose K. I forgot. It also has Vim Motions. So it has Vim Motions built in. And while I know that you can get a plugin to get Vim Motions and Vim stuff inside of VS Code, uh, it's built right into Kate. And that's fantastic. I think that that is a necessity, like I said at the beginning. So that's another reason. So um, I just remembered that. I wanted to throw that in there. The point is, is that I, I'm leaving them. And uh, yeah, it's a sad day. But I think that this is probably the best choice for me in the future. Now, I know that there is a certain segment of my audience that are going to ask me, why not Emacs? Emacs has the same problem for me that Envy Chad and LunarVim have. They have it has a ton of features and they're all in your face immediately upon actually using it for the first time. And you have to almost immediately know how to configure it if you want to change it even just the littlest bit. So if you, for example, with Emacs and with Vim, if you want to change a key binding, you have to know how to do that inside of the configuration file. If I want to know how to do that in Kate, it's simple as going to a, a drop down menu and going to the options to do so. That's it's really that simple. And while I went through the pain of learning how to change key bindings and stuff inside of them, I, I went through that journey of learning them. I don't want to do that with Emacs. I, I really have no interest in learning Lisp. I'm already learning like four other languages all at the same time. Although I've, I have more experience with HTML and CSS, so it's not it's more relearning in that aspect. But that's beside the point. I just don't have any interest in learning another language at the moment. And I've tried Emacs in the past, and every time I do, I just come out feeling overwhelmed and uh, disinterested, I should say. So that is the reason why I've not chosen Emacs. Kate is the one that I've chosen for now. We'll see where this journey kind of takes me. And hopefully I'll get good enough at coding that I won't be so embarrassed by it. And I'll be able to share some of that stuff with you guys in the future. We'll see. Uh, as is right now, I can do some things. I, I'm beyond hello world, which is, I, I think, an accomplishment for me. But it's still very early days, even though it's been months. So that's in the future. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you uh, could be so kind as to leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. If you're interested in, in supporting the channel through the merchandise store, we now have a store. You can find that at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find t-shirts and mugs and hats and all that stuff. Uh, it, it's a great way to support the channel and get something actually in return. So thanks everybody who, does, who has done that and will do that in the future. I really do appreciate it as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube because they're all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. Thanks again so, so much. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. Also, still can't say the word everybody when I'm losing my voice for some reason. Anyways, <laughs> again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>